This is Trino. He fell in love with Adam. People often stereotype the couple. We're not gang rivals, we're lovers. And their cultural backgrounds mean that their relationship hasn't always been plain sailing. You can't live your life expecting people to just fully embrace you all the time. That's just not how life is. In our culture, the gay man, it's an embarrassment to the family. Someone said, I would rather you be a drug addict than be gay. Like there's no bigger crime than that. If you sleep with a man because you love them, then you're gonna go straight to hell. My name is Trino, and this is my partner Adam, and people think that we're gang rivals, but we're actually lovers. And we've been together for 18 years. 18 years. When we first met, when we would go and get an apartment together, we always said that we were cousins. We're Mexican-American, and we're also here in California. There's a Chicano culture, and I'm first generation Mexican. My grandma, she's from Mexico. My mom, she was born here. So I'm like 20th. You're like what, third generation? The Chicano culture, the Mexican culture, the Latino culture, it's just so intense, especially us being boys. Growing up in a neighborhood where there's gang related, you know, it became part of our culture for us to survive. I think that your mom, definitely my mom, how we're making our families look, the, the shame, you know? When I first came out to my mom, um, she told me like, I don't have a son anymore, I have nothing but daughters, you know? The gay man, it's an embarrassment to the family. I knew this since I was young. Like when I met you, someone said, I would rather you be a drug addict than be gay, you know? Yeah. It's like the bottom of the barrel for some people. It just feels like there's no bigger crime than that, you know? Yeah. It's like you can go and you can cheat on your wife and you can go and beat people up on the daily, but if you sleep with a man because you love them, then you're gonna go straight to hell. My sister Brenda, she's always been really protective. I'm excited, but I'm nervous to see what she's gonna say. To hear her talk about how she felt back then, she's definitely had a lot of different emotions when I came out. You know, my sister's a really honest person. I think it's also healthy to hear her point of view. Well, I thought they were just good friends. Hey! Hi. My husband told me, I think they're together. And then I'm like, no, why would you say that? We were younger, so we didn't really talk about it that much. So, Brenda, why were you concerned about Trino being with being gay? Well, him being treated different, especially in the family, because you know, in our culture, it could be a little bit like what? And it wasn't because I was gonna love mm -hmm. you less. I was just, I feel like it could be a tough life. You know, yeah, it yeah, could yeah. define you. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, no. He's not gay. I understand nice. what you're saying because I feel like there's times, a lot of times we go to events and, and we always were like, this could be the day, you know, that we're going to meet in someone that's not always going to fill us, you know? Yeah. It's always a thought in our mind, but it's, we're never going to let it define who it's we not, are. You relate to me without you not being a gay man. We relate too much to struggles, our relationships, life, point of view. I just love the fact that you've never changed with us. You've always made us feel like we're just normal people, like, you know? We're normal. Uh, I'm normal. normal. <laughs> there's, there's no such thing as normal. This is Trino's part of the clothing, you know? <laughs> I like to just stay like with, you know, just things I'm comfortable with, you know, things that look cool. There's a brand here. Oh, sorry. And I love it because it's definitely giving cholita, huh? Yeah. Yeah, like bandanas is very like a cholo thing. It's a very classic shirt, you know, especially yeah. in the Chicano culture. When we wear this shirt, we're trying to be cholos. That's what they say. So, <laughs> so what are cholitas? A cholita is like a, a gangster, you know, it's a, it's a girl gang member. They wear the makeup a certain way, they feather their hair back, they're, they're part of gangs, you know. And it's the girl version of a cholo. A cholo is the boy gangster. And it's because, you know, you're, you're gay. And basically you're saying that we're respect, males, you know? but we're basically females. They're degrading our, our sexuality, our manhood, because we're gay, but we're having an image. When in reality, this is not an image to us. It's just clothes. Yeah, they make it seem like you can't wear certain things. Like it's a uniform. In the Chicano culture, it's a, the, it's a, it's a gang, you know? And I understand it, and I don't do it to disrespect nobody. If it bothers people, that doesn't seem to be my problem, man, you know? Some people are like, oh, you guys are trying to act like you're cholo, you're trying to act like you're hard, you're trying to act like something you're not. This is all I know how to be. People want us to be a certain way. They just can't understand that, you know, gay guys come from the hood. And I'm not afraid to, to show it and to embrace who I am. Sometimes people will say like, you know, it's okay to be gay, but just dress like you're gay. Like, Wear your how uniform. Do you, yeah, how do you dress <laughs> like you're gay, you know? Yup, this is it. Growing up, I just decided to wear the armor. So I had this demeanor of me, like I don't give a f you know what I mean? I walked to a room, they just knew not to f with me. Oh, they just remember this time? I look good. You look all right. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my curly hair. <laughs> this is one of the first pictures we ever took together. It was in the beginning, and I was—I just remember feeling so in love. Growing up, the place that we lived at, like 
you don't wear red. That was something that would never be in my closet. Just something wear that red. was programmed. <laughs> but now, like, as an adult, like, I feel like, yeah, well, I embrace the, the color red. And red looks really good on me. It does look good. The thing is, with the whole gang thing, it's like, they don't have nothing, but they only have their neighborhood. So they don't have nothing going but this. So I'm gonna protect this. We get a lot of comments on TikTok, basically on social media about how we look. So sad, sad. Where did it first happen for you both? YA or LA County? A lot of people think that we met in, in prison. There's this one comment, it says, I remember these fools from the Pinta, that's prison. I've never been in prison. He's never been I never, in prison. I don't even have a record. It made us strongest as a couple when all we have is each other, you know? So we depend on each other. Like, if he's fighting, I'm fighting. It's kind of normal for me because I always like grew up with two gay dads. With Adam, he's been in my life since I was two, so I really only remember just him being my dad, not my stepdad. But I kept it very private when it came to my dads. If someone asked and I felt comfortable enough, I would tell them. But I just knew, I think at a really young age, that people are very judgmental, especially with gay parents. And I think at the time, I don't think it was as accepting as it is now. Mm -hmm. I always had like a really good childhood. I feel like they always did their best to like make it fun and interesting. I don't think they ever told me that they were gay. Like it's just something like naturally I just always knew when I was little. A lot of people would ask, oh, so where's your mom? And I don't, honestly, I don't really remember what I used to say, but like if I felt comfortable enough, I would just tell them. It was just very private. She's girl. still private. <laughs> <laughs> it was mostly them that experienced all that judgment and it was hard to watch because it's like these people are just assuming a lot judge them based on how they looked they're covered in tattoos and <laughs> the way they dress i think they just assume like they're you know part of a gang or something they're like <laughs> in the hood like doing bad things the misconceptions i feel was that being gay parents you're gonna raise a gay child you know and i think a lot of people also think that she was gonna need some intense therapy because of the confusion and our baby shows us that she's so strong she's so strong-minded she's so aware of who she is and she's so focused and she's just definitely like the best part of us she reminds us that us raising her with love and protection and honesty is the best recipe you know so do that to your kids <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. We're just family, whatever you call that. It's cousin, homies, brothers. Do you guys understand why I was concerned in the beginning? Like, I know that I said I was mad, but I feel like I could have helped you come out, but we didn't really talk about our feelings. Mm -hmm. and, and I go back and I think, was it something I could have helped you? Like, you know how I am now? <laughs> what could I do to help you come out to mom and dad? Yeah. Or to anybody, you know? I'm proud of you because you did, your, you found it. your own strength yeah. and you did it. You dealt with it in a way that you never made me feel alone. You know what I'm saying? Well, and I it was so new and it was something you had to learn how to deal with, you know? Yeah. So I get it. You have been such a defined of our journey and you've seen us not maybe embrace ourselves. And you've never made us look judged. <laughs> no, he definitely is my safe place. Thank you for loving us, Brenda. Why oh, you I love you so much. We went honest with ourselves. Our life hasn't been perfect, our relationship's not perfect, but that's what makes us right now. So for us to really live our life very transparent, it feels amazing. So the, the recipe is just, Live your truth, you know? People see us and they think a certain way, but you know what, for us, we, we really give our hearts. You guys were like the missing pieces to my puzzle, and my puzzle has finally been completed. Thank you, Bobby, for having my back and loving me when I felt like I was on love myself, you know what I mean? So. <laughs>